got this train interrupting my recording here. Welcome to the village of Dalton, Illinois. Being ran by the village idiot, Tiffany Henyard. Who? Tiffany Henyard. No charges have been filed yet, but we'll get into all of that later in this video. But first, let's do a deep dive and see what this community is all about. About 20 miles south of the Chicago Loop is the village of Dalton, Illinois. Good for a 10 minute oil change off of Sibley Boulevard and not much else these days. Yeah, that's a way to make some friends around here, isn't it? Look, I kid, I kid about the good for not much else part, not about the 10 minute oil change part. That place actually seems like a solid place to get your car serviced. 4.7 out of five on Google? Heck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And of course that joke was made in reference to the mayor, Tiffany Henyard. But yeah, all right, so moving on now. The village of Dalton was founded around 130 years ago, December 28th, 1892 to be exact. The first developments began around 1860, which was about 30 years before the incorporation of the village. The first activity by modern settlers was thought to have been when George Dalton settled in the area. Dalton helped operate a ferry over the Little Calumet River until 1842, which at that point, a toll bridge was built. The toll bridge operated until 1856, where today's Indiana Avenue crosses over the Little Calumet River. Today's Indiana Avenue bridge serves as the boundary between Chicago and the village of Riverdale. And there's not really much to look at over there these days. Even so, we're going to be heading over to that area in just a few seconds, but first, more about the Dalton family, because it was their farm at the time that was the largest business in town, hence the village being named after the Dalton family. Back in 1860, George and his wife even established Oakland Memory Lanes, originally called the Dalton Cemetery. It's always interesting to look at old maps of an area. We'll start with an 1861 map, which was around the time that railroads started to get built in the Dalton area, and the first developments were starting to take shape. You can see that today's main thoroughfares were nothing more than some dirt country roads back then. Sibley Boulevard ended at what appears to be Torrance Avenue. Well, moving on to the next map, as this is a fire insurance map from 1901. It has Dalton spelled with an A instead of an O, which seems to have been a typo, despite the pronunciation of the name. Well, going back to the 1861 map, you can see where the Dalton family had their farms between the Little Calumet River and the modern-day CSX railroad lines. Unfortunately, the crease of the map runs right through the area that we're looking at, but even the 1861 map had Dalton's name spelled with an A. Anyway, it looks like George Dalton's land was right here, which today seems to be the general area between Perry Street and Stewart Street, sandwiched between the railroad lines. Now we're approaching the area of the Indiana Avenue Bridge over the Little Calumet River, in which, once again, even though this area is a crucial part of Dalton's history, it's not a part of today's village of Dalton, as technically, 138th Street serves as the northern boundary for Dalton. Everything north of there is Chicago, and in this part of the city, everything west of Indiana Avenue is the village of Riverdale, not to be confused with the Chicago neighborhood of Riverdale. But originally in the 19th century, where this bridge sits today, there was a toll bridge, and it was often referred to as Riverdale Crossing. Throughout the 1840s and 50s, industrial companies started to make their presence known in the Dalton and Riverdale area, hence the blue-collar vibes. The first industries included a lumber and a distilling company. While well, once the railroads were built through town, Dalton's industrial scene started to rapidly expand even more. It kind of helped that there were as many as 10 railroads that ran through Dalton at one point. But with all of the railroad companies in town and with all of the industrial jobs that were to be had, that ended up attracting immigrants to move to the area. Industries that had developed a large presence here over time included brick making, brass castings, bakery equipment, steel tanks, and various chemicals. So yeah, Dalton was a tough blue collar town to say the least. 
Dalton also grew to be a large agriculture hub, being one of the largest in Chicagoland during the early 20th century. Today, those blue collar vibes still carry on, but there's not near as many jobs as there used to be. Plus, it's a dying city now, not a growing one. Dalton isn't alone as it's a part of a larger group of Southern Cook County communities where the population and number of businesses in these towns continue to decline, while the economy for Southern Cook County continues to struggle to get out of its own way. If things keep going in the direction that they have and they're unable to reverse course, more and more of Dalton and the surrounding communities will look like this. Not only has the loss of industrial jobs depressed the region, but pollution from those industries over the years have also devalued a lot of the real estate in this area. Over time, middle-class residents had moved to newer, flashier suburban communities and had left old ones like Dalton in the rearview mirror. Of course, lower home values means a lower tax revenue for the city, just like an overall declining population does, just like a decline of industrial jobs does. During that same time frame, black families that once populated the south side of Chicago had moved out of the city proper and started to move into Dalton along with the other nearby suburban communities, such as South Holland, Calumet City, Riverdale, Robbins, and Harvey. But unfortunately, the industrial jobs that once supported this community were continuing to leave. Less jobs means more poverty, and oftentimes more poverty means lower population and more crime. Less tax revenue means less funding for Dalton schools, which means worse academic performance by the students that attend those schools. You know, everything that I just described is often referred to as an economic downward spiral, as when one aspect of the economy takes a hit, it often causes a negative momentum where city services have to cut their funds, which then lowers the quality of life for the community, which then causes the residents to feel frustration, a loss of hope, and not knowing what the future holds. But the last thing that a community like this needs is corruption, where some loser mayor loser. raises the taxes and then steals the taxpayer's money for her own, oh, I don't know, uh, luxury style vacations. Loser. But unfortunately, corruption has happened here in Dalton under the leadership of current mayor Tiffany Henyard. Loser. Unfortunately, it seems to happen in communities like Dalton throughout this country that are struggling economically quite often. Well, getting out of an economic downward spiral isn't easy. It's actually something that much of the Midwest and the country has seen ever since the downfall of industry in the United States. Ever since the late 1980s, trends across the country have shown that the rich have gotten richer and the poor have gotten poorer, slowly but surely. In 1971, the middle class made up 61% of American adults. That number shrunk down to 50% in 2021, with the upper income class going from 14% to 21%, while the lower income class at the same time grew from 25% to 29%. Here you can see the population history for Dalton. The population peaked at 25,000 back in 1970 before seeing a slight decline before growing back to 25,000 back in 2000, but since then the city has seen a pretty sharp decline. What this points out to me is the shifting of the population where the white middle class left the city in the 1970s and then poorer black families from the south side of Chicago filled in those vacancies for about a three decade stretch, hence the 82% black population in Dalton today versus the 14% white population where back in 1970, that was reversed. It was more like 80% white back then and maybe 10% black, but not anymore. And now the trend is black families are leaving Dalton for better places to live. Another thing that stood out to me was how the population decline isn't near as severe in Dalton as it is in other southern Chicago suburbs, such as Harvey, Chicago Heights, Robbins, or Riverdale. Those are all places that have lost half of their peak population, but given the drama in the town's municipal building, it wouldn't surprise me if more of Dalton ends up looking like those other nearby cities in the near future. Today, Dalton has a population of around 21,000. The median household income is just under $55,000 per year. Only 23% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $129,000 
which is pretty low. Lastly, the poverty rate is 20.2%, which is pretty high. You know, I've seen cities that have numbers that are a lot worse than what we're seeing here in Dalton, but those numbers are clearly not encouraging. Well, on to the crime rates, as Dalton has a crime rate of 429 for every 100,000 residents, whereas the property crime rate is 2,500 for every 100,000 residents. That's not bad at all, really, for a place that has such economic struggles. That's actually a pretty good crime rate when you compare it to the other nearby cities. But really, the worst crime that's committed here in Dalton is the way that people drive. I guess when a train arrives in this town, people just drive around the uh, gates. Maybe that's why, because it's going slow as molasses. It's not just trains, no. People can't be slowed down for anything around here. Even if it's a driver going maybe five miles per hour over the speed limit instead of 20. Hey there, you. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah. Anywhere you go in Chicagoland, really, you feel like you're in a live filming for an episode of Mad Max. I guess that explains why this street has so many damn speed bumps, because there's probably a strong history here of people driving like a-holes. I mean, it is Chicago, so of course there is. That being said, nobody has placed more speed bumps on Dalton's road to economic growth than this gal here, Tiffany Henyard. Loser. Who is not only the mayor of the village of Dalton, but is also the Thornton Township Supervisor. <laughs> this gal pats herself on the back for being the first female mayor of Dalton. Let's give her a round of applause for that. Yeah, first female mayor of Dalton. Well, she calls herself a super mayor, and on her IG, her bio says, The most powerful woman in the Southland of Chicago. I think she might have let that get to her head a little bit. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that. Let's get on with the story of the village idiot, shall we? And yes, she is the village idiot for thinking that she could get away with all of this stuff that she's tried to pull. And needless to say, she's done an awful job at hiding it. Well, where do we start? Let's start with her hard work of bringing in food trucks. Yeah, because apparently... Henyard wants all of you to know just how hard she has worked to bring a food truck pavilion to Dalton. Is that right, Tiffany Henyard? Is that among your top accomplishments of being the mayor of Dalton? Do you work hard? Go ahead, share. What else have you done for your community? Have you possibly closed dozens of businesses for no other reason than the fact that they didn't give you money for your stupid campaign? That's what three former employees have claimed in a lawsuit that they've filed against Henyard for wrongful firing. This ABC7 article explains how Samisha Williams was the director of building permits and licenses for the village of Dalton. But because she didn't do the unethical tasks that Henyard was asking of her, such as withholding building permits and business licenses to people who didn't donate to her campaign... Well, Henyard sent her packing to a different department so that she could find someone who would honor her requests. Even though Williams was the only one in the department who knew how to process business licenses. So she was the only in-house candidate that was qualified for the job. There's other claims within the lawsuit as well, like how one of the three former employees states how she was intentionally treated differently from other similarly situated employees, which is hard to prove, but given all of the other dirt on Henyard, it was probably true, and it might be easier to prove that because of all of the damage that's already been done to Henyard's reputation. Additionally, Henyard restricted access to certain buildings for certain employees. And having clashes with village trustee members has been a regular thing ever since she was sworn into office. 
But that's not the only lawsuit that's been filed against Tenured. Loser. As this time, it's a civil lawsuit. An employee claimed that on a quote-unquote business trip to Las Vegas... Yeah, right, a business trip to Vegas to go see a conference. Yeah, sure, okay. Well, that employee on that business trip blacked out on a certain night, and on that night, she was sexually assaulted by this guy, Andrew Holmes, who is a village trustee. He even called an officer during the night of and bragged about having unprotected sex. The officer recorded the interaction on his phone, and both the victim and the officer did the right thing in reporting the crime. The two had a meeting with Henyard, loser, and Henyard responded by saying that if this information became public, that all of the work that she had done, Henyard, all of that work would be lost. Yeah, okay, you haven't done any work, Henyard, but okay, but yeah, alright, Henyard also informed the victim that she would take care of it and to trust her. Well, the following day, she was put on unpaid medical leave, and eventually she was terminated. Additionally, the officer was demoted to patrol duty for coming forward as a witness. Despite all of this going on, you can see her face on billboards and signs all throughout town, like this one here, in which Thornton in Thornton Township was misspelled. A December 2023 article explained how open records showed that Thornton Township paid more than $10,000 for four vinyl billboards, with an additional $12,000 to Clear Channel for a one-month rental of the billboards that were along I-57, which bypasses Dalton to the west. It's an amazing sight, to be quite honest with you. Seeing her face being posted on signs, on billboards, on highways, on buildings, all throughout the city, all throughout the area. Despite all of the allegations of corruption and the lawsuits that have been filed against her over the past few years. Like, I don't see any other Chicago area mayor promoting themselves as much as the one for Dalton is. Heck, part of the reason why she won the vote to be mayor of Dalton in the first place was because she was paying for people's gas at a local gas station. But, of course, despite the clear and obvious evidence of her paying for people to fill up their gas tanks, she denies buying people's votes. More accusations of Henyard includes how 10% of Dalton's police department has been dedicated to serve as her own personal team of security guards. Henyard spent over $258,000 during the first 17 months of her term as mayor on having at least three officers by her side 24 hours a day in a small village of 20,000 people that doesn't really have that high of a crime rate. That's a rate of taxpayers spending over $1 million on Henyard having a three-person security team over the stretch of a four-year term. To make matters even worse, Henyard has participated in anti-violence marches, and at first thought, you might say, but wait, what's so bad about that? What's so bad about standing up for anti-violence? Well, what's bad about it is that to some people, it's seen this way. She'll encourage taking away citizens' rights to own a gun, but everywhere she goes, she's being protected by three armed police officers to ensure her safety. Now, I'm not taking a side personally here one way or another. I'm not trying to start the gun debate. I'm just saying that by having her own security guards 24-7, she's being a hypocrite when she's also being vocal about taking away citizens' rights to own guns. On to the next questionable move now, which seems like it's a never-ending list, but this one is pretty disturbing, as back in 2021, right when Henyard was being sworn into office, she hired a registered s*** offender as a municipal code enforcement officer and home inspector. That meant that part of Lavelle Redmond's job was to go inside people's homes where children could be living inside. Loser. The same guy that spent 24 years in prison for being a part of a gang you-know-what in Chicago back in 1991. Village trustees said that they were stunned by the hire and that the mayor did it without their consent. Redmond didn't have that job for long, and he was accused in October of 2021 for violating his offender registration and was held on a $10,000 bond. 
Next up is at Times, Henyard has ordered police officers to remove citizens from public meetings, even though it's within the citizens' rights to attend these meetings. Henyard also had police take away the signs that peaceful protesters were holding up at these meetings, which violates a Fourth Amendment right to be free from unreasonable search and seizure and also violated a First Amendment right to carry a sign and speak at public meetings. In fact, as of two weeks prior to me uploading this video, Henyard blocked off access to City Hall from the public altogether, even though that's unlawful. During her tenure, she has purchased vehicles for the Thornton Township Police with funds that were supposed to be for repairing roads. Expensive vehicles at that. To make matters even worse, the vehicles had fake license plates. Heck, Henyard even has a nonprofit called Tiffany Henyard Cares, which is advertised to assist individuals with cancer, but of course, she instead used it to clean thousands of taxpayer dollars to be used for her own personal gain, as she has never submitted tax filings to show how the money that was collected in the foundation was spent. She also denies having anything to do with the Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation, despite the name of the foundation being Tiffany Henyard Cares. There's also plenty of evidence that says otherwise for that particular matter. Now, when it comes to just flat-out spending money, Henyard has spent over $67,000 in Dalton and Thornton Township taxpayer money on multiple vacations from July to November 2023. These trips included first-class plane tickets and staying at luxury five-star hotels. And of course, every time she's asked about it, she refuses to explain why she spends so much money on these trips. She really seems to not care, despite the name of her foundation. And she seems to be enjoying every second of having the power that comes with being the mayor of Dalton, along with being the supervisor of Thornton Township. I mean, the village of Dalton has a YouTube channel, and when you look on their YouTube channel, you can find a video of her. It's actually a music video, and it seems to serve no purpose at all whatsoever. At times, she has even hired a DJ to play music during public meetings, treating these public meetings as if they were instead parties rather than a meeting that's supposed to serve the public interest and build trust within the community. Dalton residents have been upset with Henyard for almost her entire term. It was back in June of 2022, which was about a year into her term, where 56% of voters were in favor of a recall. Cook County ruled against the recall, however, and instead of conducting a village board meeting, Henyard turned it into a karaoke floor and celebrated by jamming out to Ain't No Stoppin' Us Now by McFadden and Whitehead as she was celebrating winning that ruling despite knowing that over half of her community was not happy with her. All of these actions from the mayor over the last three years have led to a breaking point. In February, the Village Board of Trustees approved an official investigation into the alleged misuse of village funds by Henyard. But of course, Henyard vetoed the investigation into herself back on February 22nd because she could. And she said, We are under attack and I will be victorious once the dust clears. Yeah, if victory for Henyard means jail time, then yeah, victory. Because eventually that's where she's likely to end up. The trustee's resolution mandated Henyard to submit the village's financial records. The trustees also asked for agencies to step in, such as the FBI, the U.S. Attorney, Cook County Sheriff, and Cook County's State Attorney. The FBI began their investigation late February, and as of the time of me uploading this video on April 12, 2024, there are still no official charges against Henyard. During a meeting on April 2nd, the Board of Trustees had their opportunity to override Henyard's veto of calling an outside investigation on her. Henyard responded by saying that the trustees were performing a theater stunt. 
Dalton's trustees ended up hiring former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot as a special investigator to look into Henyard's actions. Henyard's alleged unauthorized use of village funds has resulted in Dalton having a deficit of more than $5 million. Meanwhile, once Lightfoot is paid $30,000, she will give a full summary of her investigation into the village trustees, who are paying her a rate of $400 per hour for her work. The drama isn't officially over, though, as the village attorney who works for Henyard is warning the trustees that they don't have the authority to hire a personal investigator and that Henyard won't approve any payments made to Lightfoot. To the right is Thornridge High School, home of the Falcons. Among the most notable alumni includes actors Jane Lynch and Nelson Ellis, along with former NBA player and coach Quinn Buckner. And of course, yours truly. Loser. Well people, it is now that time. What did we learn in this video? We learned that you can never trust a mayoral candidate who buys you gas at the corner of Broadway and St. Clair, and you can't always trust Tiffany Henyard during any time, anywhere. But you can always trust Chris's livability score. The first category is education, and Thornridge High School performs poorly in each and every category these days. The percent of students who are considered to be proficient in all three major categories, math, reading, and science, are well below the state averages. It gets a 3 out of 20. Crime isn't really all that bad in Dalton, with crime rates being only slightly above the national average rate. It gets a 10 out of 20. Downtown is the next category, and to me, it looked miserable, abandoned, storefronts everywhere you look, rundown buildings not taken care of well over the years, but infrastructure is there for maybe something better one day, for now it gets a 4 out of 20. The economy is miserable in Dalton, even more so now that the mayor has run several small businesses out of town in order to boost her own ego, it gets a 4 out of 20. The only reason it gets a 4 instead of maybe a 1 or even a 0 is because it's a part of a larger metro area where you can find some real opportunities in other Chicagoland cities. Well, recreational opportunities are far and few in between in the surrounding area. You have to go to Indiana Dunes, a half hour to the east, for the best stuff. It gets a 3 out of 20. History is next, and Dalton has some history worth mentioning. It's Interesting to dive deep into some of the blue-collar roots and how it grew as an inner ring suburb of Chicago, but it doesn't really have the best story by any means. It gets an 8 out of 20. Amenities is next, and there is absolutely nothing in town once you get away from Sibley Boulevard, although there are some things off of the town's main drag. Nearby Calumet City once had a large retail scene, but that has been declining drastically in the recent years. There's other suburban areas to live in that have a better selection of nearby amenities, so it gets a 6 out of 20. Last up is cost of living, and while the housing prices aren't really all that high, there's nothing worse 
than having a mayor who misuses millions of dollars of taxpayer funds, and that's something that is going to hurt the community for a long time. That absolutely plays a factor into the cost of living score because it's going to be the taxpayers who have to pay back that deficit. So cost of living gets a 12 out of 20. All in all, the Chris livability score for Dalton, Illinois is 50 out of 160. And you can blame the loser who's serving as the village mayor right now for Dalton having that embarrassingly low of a Chris livability score. Look, it's going to take a long time for this community to be able to rebound from the damage that Tiffany Henyard has caused to the village's checkbook. They don't call it Crook County for nothing, though, and unfortunately, Illinois has a reputation for being one of the more corrupt states in the U.S. year after year, and most of it can be found in the city of Chicago. Although, there is one Illinois city that I think you should check out right here in rural Illinois that had a treasurer steal $54 million of taxpayer money. I'll see you in that video. Peace.